Hey folks, just thought I'd make a little video. I'm heading on, um, I've left Mackay, my hometown, and I'm heading to uh, Marlborough along the old inland route. It's it's not the main way they travel now, they, they use the, the modern highway which is closer to the coast. But I'm heading out there because it's the, used to be known as the Horror Highway or the Badlands for all the murders that happened there in the 60s and 70s. So we'll travel up the, up this road and uh, we'll stop at a few of the locations and I'll explain some brief details of uh, what's happened at each location. All right, catch you on the road. <coughs> 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 Folks, I'm about a half an hour out of Serena, still heading towards Marlborough. Just pulled up here to show you this magnificent uh, country here. Get the mountains in the distance, and then the farmlands. This is all cattle grazing area here. Really nice. Just pulled up again, folks, to show you these um, hoop pines that grow up on the mountains. They're a really nice timber, but there's a catch. They only grow at the higher altitudes. So I'll just, just pan, switch the camera and I'll show you. There you can just see them. They're the taller trees poking their heads up on the top of this mountain here. Nice timber if you're a woodworker. But uh, a bit hard to get them down from the mountain. Okay, onwards. Folks, all right, we've pulled up at our first uh, murder scene, which is uh, Funnel Creek. And uh, so we'll walk down towards the creek and I'll give you a look at the area and then I'll explain what's happened here. Folks, as I said before, we're here at Funnel Creek. It's about um, 180 odd kilometres from Marlborough, which is the way I'm heading. And this is the, st for the scene of the earliest murder that I know of on this uh, stretch of highway they know as the Horror Highway, or it's also known as the Badlands. It was in the June of uh, 1966 that two men lured two other victims from the Collinsville pub, which is a, a fair way north of here. Um, they tricked them down here and said that they, they would give them work, and they ended up here, shot here on the banks of Funnel Creek, wrapped in chicken wire and then uh, dumped into the water, weighed down with um, car, car rims, tyre rims. Uh, the men were charged, caught, charged and end up getting life imprisonment.
next event that Funnel Creek was involved in was uh, the murder of Noel and Sophia Weckett. Now Noel Weckett was found shot in his car with the seatbelt still on about 30 k's south that way and a week later Sophia Weckett was found uh, on the banks of this Funnel Creek again shot in the back and it appeared she, uh, she'd been shot while she was fleeing um, whoever had her. Uh, police eventually uh, caught the murderers. Um, ended up being two men and a younger lady and uh, um, they were imprisoned for their crimes. It's a beautiful spot here, nice spot. You wouldn't think such uh, horrible things happened here. So we're going to head on down the road further towards Marlborough. Um, you may notice this video is a bit strange sometimes. It's, well, I'm trying to get used to this new gimbal that holds my phone. Whereas generally I use um, my GoPro. So we'll see how we go with that anyway. That's Goodbye to Funnel Creek. I pulled up in there slightly higher ground away from the creek uh, just to show you something. It's in this uh, dry sort of savannah country. And these are the termite mounds we get in this uh, drier country. Let's see if I can get my hand on there to show you the size. Now they're nothing compared to the mounds that occur in the Northern Territory. Here in Queensland that's uh, about the size we get. And they're scattered, dotted through the, through the place. I see one in the distance there, just there. Another one over there. Okay, I'll just show you something else, and that's these ironbark trees that Australia's famous for. That's a stand of them just in there with their dark, hard bark. And the timber is like steel. I've, I've used it in woodworking very, very hard. Nice timber, nice dark red timber, but extremely hard.
G'day folks. Well, since leaving Funnel Creek, I've travelled 30 uh, kilometres on the speedo of my car to the spot where um, records show that uh, Noel Weckett was shot while, sit while still wearing his seatbelt in the front seat of his car. And uh, Sophia Beckett was not to be found. And uh, we've spoken about that previously up 30 k's up the road at Funnel Creek. That's where they end up finding her body one week later, shot in the back. She appeared to have been fleeing. Uh, it's a lonely old spot. I'm not saying this is the, exactly the spot, but it'll be somewhere in this vicinity if the records are right. He was murdered. The country is this we're talking about. 45 years ago, so the country's been cleared since then. Um, it's probably a little bit different, but still, you get that feeling here that uh, something terrible has happened. At the same time, you get a, a nice feeling because it's nice country, but it's, it's a mixture. I'll just pan around and show you the country, the hills in the distance, and uh, just slight rolling hills here. Not much here. But Noel would have been in his car and kaboom shot and the wife his partner Sophia um abducted for a week of probably horrors. The only other thing around here is uh, an empty whiskey bottle. Looks fresh. Famous Jim Beam. Okay, onward folks, down the road towards our next crime scene. folks I've just pulled up at uh, Connors River and in the early days this was a site of a camp where some people lived or just stayed while traveling there were good people stayed here and of course where there's good people there were bad people that stayed here as well 40, 50 years ago, this was a, the road wasn't that good. It was an isolated area. It was an ideal place for criminals to camp and stay. Now, um, when we get further up the road towards Marlborough, we're going to talk about two brothers that were shot and killed there. But for the moment, this camp is where the killer of the two brothers was living when he was caught. So there we have it, Connors River. Another nice area, beautiful spot. Don't know if I'd be game enough to camp, even though it's a, it's, it's a nice spot where I'd be game enough to camp here overnight. Before I came out here I was researching the area and uh, I got a little bit, a little spooked. As a matter of fact I don't even want to be out here at night time on this road and 50 years later. But it doesn't seem too bad now I'm out here. Onward down the road towards Marlborough. Next stop will be Princester Creek, where Ron and Joyce Linfoot were shot by a sniper. But this time, the victims got away. So we'll talk about that when we get there.
Strangest things you see on the side of the road. Olympic torch relay. 1956. Monument. And then pull up on the side of the road jobs, folks. I spotted this bottle tree and I thought I'd show you. We'll go over for a closer look. Called a bottle tree, that big bulbous trunk. Good day, folks. Uh, well, I've driven 80k since that last stop looking for Princester Creek, the site of a, a shooting in September 1967. I can't find it, but there was a couple of creeks that were unmarked, the signs are missing. So I can only guess that it was one of them. I've adopted this creek behind me to stand in for Princester Creek, if you don't mind, while I tell the story. Well, as I said, it was September 1967. Uh, Ron and Joyce Linfoot were travelling with their caravan. They uh, pulled over on the side of the road and um, a, a, a sniper opened fire and, and shot Ron. He, Ron had exited the vehicle and then he was shot by, by a, a shooter in a sniper position. Um, Joyce was that jo Joyce exited the vehicle and was shot in the shoulder. Ron grabbed his rifle, managed to grab his rifle. Ron was shot in the lower back, I think. And uh, he grabbed his rifle and started firing into the into the area the shooting was come from, while Joyce um, um, frantically got the car and the the car started. Ron made it back to the car and they took off. So they were both alive but wounded. Uh, they made it back to Rocky. Um, Ron ended up being paralysed sadly, and uh, was in a wheelchair. Criminals were eventually caught and given life imprisonment. And that's the story of Ron and Joyce Linfoot. Another horrible crime. At the moment we're about 28 kilometres out of Marlborough where I'm stopping for the night that, and that's the end of uh, this stretch of road that's been called the Horror Highway, the Badlands. Um, just outside of Marlborough was the site of another shooting so I don't know the exact position but when we get near, near Marlborough I'll, I'll stop and I'll tell that story. So for now it's uh, onward up the road to Marlborough.
Well, I'm just outside of Marlborough, about eight kilometres, and one can only guess at this. The scene of my next crime was a position like this, where two young fellas pulled over in their car and uh, settled in for the night in their sleeping bags. Um, the two young fellas were brothers, and as I said, they were in their car in their sleeping bags, and the um, killer approached the vehicle and shot one of the brothers many times before turning on the other brother. And I don't know a lot of details of the story after this, but um, the other brother was injured and, and must have managed to escape. And the uh, killer was eventually uh, caught and, and jailed and imprisoned. This was the killer that was living at Connor's river camp that I mentioned earlier. Well folks, I've reached the end of the horror highway. Well, actually the inland route between uh, Serena and Marlborough. The town of Marlborough's just behind me and I'm staying there for the night so uh, yeah, it was quite an adventure. It took a few hours, or oh, took most of the most of the day to travel and stop here and there. Strange place. Uh, mixed feelings about it. These are modern times, things are different. I'm in a modern car, and, um, but I can imagine 40, 50 years ago things were a lot different. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Stay well.